Hi, welcome to the Aromatic Pipe. I'm Steve, and we'll be talking about the art and pleasure of smoking aromatic pipe tobacco. So today I'm smoking uh, Boswell's Berry Cobbler in a Barling Londoner pipe. It's an old pipe, they don't make it anymore. And I'm drinking um, an Arnold Palmer as put out by Arizona Tea. So today I'm going to talk about managing moisture. Now, I, I think moisture gets a bad rap because you always hear about a, a dry, cool smoke. So it seems almost as if we don't want moisture. But the truth is, um, without moisture, you don't have a vehicle to, for the taste to, to enter your mouth. In fact, it's the reason that we salivate to, to get flavor. So if it's too dry, all you get is hot smoke that can burn your mouth and it burns too quickly and it burns too fast. If it gets too moist now, the problem is that you can get a lot of that uh, tobacco juice that collects all the tars and makes that icky stuff and you draw the smoke through that icky moisture. The other problem is, is if you get to smoking it too hot because it's harder to keep lit if it's too moist, so you end up smoking it hotter, which then turns it into steam, which makes it even hotter for your mouth and, and gets burned. So it's important that we manage moisture, but you can get too much, but you can get too little. Now, um, most of the time people get too much. So that's the reason you hear about a cool, dry smoke. So I just let my pipe go out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about where moisture comes from, how much moisture you need, what uh, you might do to mitigate moisture and all that stuff. So, there's a, a couple sources, or it's four sources of moisture. There's first of all the moisture that's in the tobacco and of course you can mitigate that by letting it dry out. Uh, most aromatic pipe tobaccos will hold a little more moisture and that's actually not a bad thing. Let me get this going here. But you want the, that to be at the best level and you kind of have to experiment with each tobacco on its own. Uh, I, I really recommend when you're starting out especially that you start out with a tobacco that you're more constant with to cut down on all the variables. Find, you know, just find something that that works for you. Uh, find a popular tobacco, maybe one of my recommendations, and uh, then just stick with one tobacco for a while so you get the hang of it all if you're beginning. Um, so what you want to do is, is get the tobacco at the right moisture. Uh, usually aromatic to buy tobacco you really don't need to humidify uh, much at all. You might need to let it dry out just a little. I've really found that most of the Boswell tobaccos will come right at the right moisture, so you don't really have to worry about it uh, too much. The other source of moisture is the air. And of course, the air has a temperature, especially if you're smoking outside. The air also has a, a moisture content, and that can be different on different days. Uh, there's the moisture that comes from your mouth. Uh, as we've talked about, you're going to go both ways with the air. Uh, and there again, that's kind of a given for a given day. So you kind of got to work with what you got. But probably the thing that we need to talk about most is um, moisture that comes from condensation. Now you may not realize that you have, there's a lot of issues with condensation in a pipe, but there are. And so uh, how to get to an understanding of condensation. So you know in the fall when school starts, that's likely, at least here in... Uh, the, the, in Ohio, uh, that's when we tend to have it is in the fall, when school starts. So you'll get fog on the ground. What's, what's going on with that? Well, the ground cools overnight, and when the air warms up the next day, the, that warm air hits the cool ground, and that's what gives you moisture, and there, there tends to be moisture on the ground. There tends to be that fog, which is uh, the moisture then dropping off. So, what we really need to do is we need to manage where hot things are coming into contact with cold things. Um, that's the problem. And so, we're 
if you're using my techniques, we're really getting that in a few different ways. So, I've got this really crude drawing here for you for how a pipe's working. Now this is, we've talked about, if you just burn the middle, you're going to have this cherry in the middle of your tobacco, and there's going to be some ash on top as it goes down. This is loosely packed tobacco here, and here's the draft hole coming from the bowl. Now, what we're doing is, when, by the time the air gets to the briar, since the briar is a hard surface, that's where the condensation is going to collect. So if we get a bunch of hot air here right away and a cool briar, you're going to get condensation all along here. Now, the good thing with briar is it, it does have some absorption, but it's also an insulator. And so an insulator uh, works at various degrees, but most insulators uh, have air gaps in it. So, so you know, like in the winter, um, you can get by with less thick materials if you have layers. So, so here in the north, we always talk about wearing layers in the summer, in the winter. That that helps you keep warm. Uh, that keeps your body temperature separate from the outside temperature, right? All these layers. You'll notice that most insulators, like you think about down, has lots of air pockets. Same thing with that fuzzy stuff they put in your walls when they're building your house. Of course, this is when I'm going to get aircraft flying overhead. The same thing happens with tobacco and briar. The tobacco, since we've got it as an insulating part between here and this cherry that we built up by lighting it in the middle, the tobacco acts like a loose insulator. The briar also acts like an insulator. This is where the importance of old briar comes in. Uh, old briar has had the chance, if it's cured correctly, uh, to move all the saps and stuff out of it. So it has more air pockets in in the briar and the heat, uh, it acts as a, as a better insulator in some ways. Um, as that briar soaks stuff up, it's going to transmit heat more and more. So what we want to do is we want to slowly, when I talk about warming up the pipe, so we want to slowly warm up everything around here. It's when we get this quick transition that we get more condensation. So what's happening is we're warming up a small one. Your, your cherry's probably going to be a little bigger. This is not really to scale. But this cherry is going to warm up tobacco and it's going to be, if, if we could put a, a temperature diagram here, it would be real warm in the cherry and then less warm as you go out. And of course, the longer you go, the more all this is going to warm up. So as you go down, this cherry should get bigger. And what's going to happen, since we're tamping on the sides around the bowl, we're actually increasing the density of this. So as things warm up, we're actually increasing the density of uh, the tobacco as we go a little bit. Not, not, don't do that too quickly. Um, but what that's going to do is transfer more heat at, after things get warmed up a little bit. So that's going to improve our ability to not have so much condensation. So we're not going to build up a bunch of condensation along this, this briar wall, which is then going to end up in a bunch of liquids down here at the bottom of your bowl and into your draft hole. Um, we don't want to be running that hot air through a bunch of yuck, that tar and stuff, and that's what tastes bitter and awful, and it just gives you an awful taste. So we want to avoid that. So that's why we're doing what we're doing, okay? So we're keeping a nice cherry in the middle, allowing it to get bigger as we go down. Our pipe's going to warm up slowly, as will the tobacco. The tobacco's going to warm up slowly, and what that's going to make is, is flavor. As we pull this cool air past the warm tobacco, now we're going to draw the moisture from the air in that tobacco that's warm. It's not cold. It's not hot. So we're drawing flavor all the way around here from this tobacco, and we're going to heighten the flavor. And that's the reason when it's the, the cherry's about in the middle, that's really where you should be getting the most flavor if things are going well. Okay, there's another place for condensation in the building of a pipe also. And that's kind of at the other end. So if we, if we look here where your bit is, 
Um, this would be a classic way to construct a bit. This is the air gap here. This is the briar, and this is a vulcanite or acrylic or whatever you're using for a bit. This would be the classic way to do it. Now, this would be if everything went perfectly, and, a, and actually, uh, this is an idealized situation because it can't ever be perfect. What happens is these two materials expand and contract to different rates. Um, so you'll see a few different things, and, and the hard part is, is as as craftsmen, as craftsmen in wood, oftentimes they want there to be no gap. They want this to be a perfect fit. But what happens is sometimes you will get a gap right here. Now the other thing we haven't talked about is uh, evaporation. So how does evaporation work? Well, you know, in the winter again, when you get condensation on the inside of your window, what does your car do? It's trying to run warm air over that window so that it evaporates all of that moisture that's on your window so that you can see to drive. We want to do the same thing with the pipe. So as part of what we're doing here is we're running air along here, along this interface where we're liable to bring up condensation. Whatever condensation we do get, we're running air past it. The same thing happens here, except when we get a gap here, you're going to get turbulence. And what turbulence means is there's going to be some places where the air is not moving well. And, and if you have this big gap here, and there's some pipes it's, it's really bad, especially in some cheaper pipes. What they want to do is they want to make it look like good craftsmanship so they want um, this this gap here to not show at all not have any gap here whatsoever but oftentimes what they'll do is they'll drill this hole where the the uh, tenon goes into the mortise they'll drill that too deep and you'll get this big gap right here um, so so a way that you can test that is when you buy a pipe you can pull it apart, right? You pull it apart, and, and you're going to take, since you can't put your mouth on anything or anything, you're going to take a, a pipe cleaner, and you stick it down in there, and oftentimes you can feel where the thing is. Now, this one just has a hole going down all through the middle. So, yeah. and I don't have a good pipe to do this with right now, of course. But sometimes what you can do is go in here, and you'll feel where that shelf is, and then you want to measure that against how long your mortise is, okay? So, so that's one thing. This pipe, basically what they've done is they've just made this so it's, it's there. You know, it's a cheap pipe. Um, it really wasn't constructed right because that's going to create turbulence, you know. So basically what this pipe is going to have is since this hole goes out all the way Shows on both sides. Since this hole goes all the way out here to the edge of this, it's going to mean when the air hits this, it's all going to pile up here, and then you're going to draw it through the bit, right? And so you're going to have this big turbulence right here where the air is coming down faster here, and it's going to, it's going to, this has to speed up the, 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 the smoke here because you got this volume of air coming and it comes into this smaller gap and it has to speed up and it's going to create all kinds of turbulence and when you suck it's going to affect the way that the air comes through okay um, so that's one construction what you get in filter pipes is they get more complex they they say okay well you can't avoid having some gap there so what we're going to do is make this giant gap and they'll either put a stinger in here which is supposed to put metal in there and you collect the moisture and you're going to kind of control where the moisture goes. Or uh, the, some of the first filters, what they did is they actually just made this gap where you could roll up a piece of paper and put the piece of paper in there. And the idea was is that the air would go down through the middle of the piece of paper and this would collect whatever moisture was there. I, personally, I don't like any of those ideas and oftentimes they'll tell you well just take out the filter and you can do it without that Savinelli makes a little adapter but then you can see what you happen you're gonna have a gap here a gap here you're actually increasing your number of gaps and they make it with quite a bit of slop in both ends um, 
Savinelli, they, their system is a little different. What they do is they give you, this is a Savinelli filter pipe, so they're nine millimeter filter, and they give you this piece of balsa wood, and the air is supposed to go around it, and they're trying to keep it constant, so the balsa wood fits in this little pocket. Well, what I found with that was it, it just makes sure you gather a bunch of tar and junk and it tastes, I, I think it just makes it taste worse, especially with aromatic t tobacco. So you put in the, the other thing, I don't know that it helps much. I found it actually s smokes better if I just don't have anything in there, but it's still not ideal because what you really want is a consistent and constant airflow so that you can have that effect of evaporation kind of taking the condensation away uh, from the walls. You're not going to avoid condensation completely because this material here does not really, um, it has a, bri briar can actually absorb some moisture as well as acting like an insulator. This is not a very good insulator because it's a hard material and the other thing is it doesn't really absorb anything so almost always you're going to get a little evaporation when it hits when it goes from briar to whatever your bit is made out of you're going to get some evaporation there hopefully like when I was showing you a Canadian one of the things that happens is you have a longer shank this is why I'm suggesting a longer shank, it goes along that briar, you're getting much further away from the bowl, you have that absorbing material all the way, and you have a very small bit at the end, which means there's very little surface for condensation to collect. That's one of the reasons that uh, Canadian works a little better, um, it really is with smoking just about anything, when you look at the function of it, especially if you don't have some kind of filter or that. Now this one, I thought looked pretty good and when I bought it on eBay like we said it doesn't have a filter or anything it just has this but the problem is is they drilled the draft hole all the way down through and uh, so there's there's this shelf here it's going to make some condensation it's got the the thin bowl like I talked about so you can feel the heat and we want to manage that heat because if it gets too hot too quickly uh, you're going to have a lot of condensation but we're probably going to get some evaporation. This is going to detract some from the ability of it to smoke. Now, usually what happens is, well, I won't get into pipe construction. But that's, that's kind of, so part of what we're doing is, in the method that I taught you, um, we're warming up the bowl, and we're also warming up this end of the pipe when we blow out, because we have that, that warm smoke coming in, and then when we blow back through the other way, we're, we're blowing some of that, hot smoke back through again and what that's going to do is help evaporate so even as we're coming here and condensing we're going to evaporate so we're going back both ways and we're warming up this at the same time as we're warming up this it all warms together so we don't have these large disparities in temperature and like in the fall you'll notice that as the day wears on all of a sudden the fog all goes away. Why is that? Because as everything starts warming up and it's the same temperature, you don't have this difference in temperature that makes condensation and all the wet grass and everything else. So I had a lot to tell you <laughs> here about condensation. Hopefully it helps a little bit and helps explain why I'm talking about things uh, the way that I am and, and helping you control your condensation. Uh, I hope this helps you in your pipe smoking. God bless you. Have a great day. If this video was helpful, if you would hit subscribe. If you want to see my videos whenever they come out, hit the bell at the bottom there. And uh, have a great day. God bless.